we're going to be looking at physical quantities and their scientific units. Physical quantities can be measured or can be determined from measurements. And so they all have numerical magnitudes, values. A few do not have units, so for example, efficiency, but most have units. And so an example of a physical quantity would be time, and we could measure it as five hours. So the five representing the magnitude and the hours representing the unit. And it's important to give a unit because otherwise the magnitude will be meaningless. So if we had a time equals five, well, what does that mean? Does it mean five milliseconds or seconds, minutes, hours, days, years? So it's always important to state the unit when giving the magnitude of a physical quantity. Scientists use the international system of units known as SI units. And SI units have base units, which are the fundamental units from which all other units can be derived from. So these base units are the building blocks of all other units. And here are six of the seven base units. So seconds, meters, kilogram, ampere, Kelvin, the temperature, and the mole. The seventh base unit is the candela, which is the unit for luminosity, which we do not cover for A level physics. Here are some quantities that have units derived from the SI base units. So area, which is a length squared, would have a unit of metres squared. Velocity, which has the same units as speed, and speed is equal to a distance divided by time. So distance is measured in metres and time is measured in seconds. So the units for speed and velocity would be metres per second. So the per second we're representing as s to the minus 1. Acceleration, which is equal to a change in velocity divided by the time taken. So the delta sign here is representing a change. Or velocity, we said as units meters per second and time as units of second. So we have a meters per second divided by a second will give the units of acceleration to be meters per second squared. And we represent the per second squared as s to the minus two. Some quantities have units which have special names usually the names of scientists. Do you know the units and unit symbols of these physical quantities? Well, hopefully you have this. And it's important to note that these units that are named after people, the unit symbols are in capitals. So for N for Newton, P for Pascal, and so on. And this sign is capital omega to represent the unit ohm. Physical equations must be homogeneous. And that means units of both sides of the equation must be equal. So here we have the equation force equals mass times acceleration. So the unit of force is the Newton. So that must equal the units of mass times acceleration. So the units of mass is the kg and the SI units of acceleration is meters per second squared. So the Newton equals kg meters per second squared.
for this equation, we're saying acceleration equals velocity multiplied by time. So the units of acceleration is meters per second squared. And so that should equal the units of velocity, which is meters per second, multiplied by the units of time, which is seconds. However, meters per second multiplied by seconds means that the seconds cancelled, and so we're left with meters. And so the acceleration cannot have units of meters, and so this equation is not valid. Units can have power of 10 prefixes, which indicates the multiple or submultiple of the unit. So if we first look at submultiples, so 10 to the minus 2 represents one hundredth of a unit, and so that's centi with a symbol C. So if we had 5.0 centimetres and we had to convert it into SI units, that is in metres, well centi means a hundredth. So we would do 5.0 divided by 100, which will equal 0 0.050 metres. 10 to the minus 3, which is 1,000th of a unit, represents milli. 10 to the minus 6, which is a millionth, is micro which has Greek symbol mu. So if we had 80 microseconds to convert it into SI units of seconds, it would be 80 divided by a million, or 80 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 6. 10 to the minus 9 is nano, 10 to the minus 12 pico and 10 to the minus 15 femto. Now for multiples of unit, where well we multiply by 10 to the 3, that is a thousand times, is kilo. Multiplying by 10 to the 6, a million times, is mega. Multiplying by 10 to the 9, it's giga, and multiplying by 10 to the 12 is tera. So, for example, to convert 3.2 gigawatts into SI units, watt, then it will be 3.2 multiplied by 10 to the power of 9. To convert centimeters squared to meters squared, well, we know one centimetre is a hundredth of a metre. So how many metre squareds are there for one centimetre squared? Well, one centimetre squared is equal to one centimetre multiplied by one centimetre. So if we convert the centimetres into metres, we have one centimetre is a one hundredth of a metre multiplied by another one hundredth of a metre. So one centimetre squared is equal to one divided by a hundred squared metres squared. So to convert centimetre squared into metres squared, we have to divide by a hundred for the centi squared because it's two dimensions. So to convert 2.0 centimetres squared into SI units, that is metres squared, we would have to divide by 100 squared. To convert millimetres squared to metres squared, we know one millimetre is equal to one thousandth of a metre. So how many metres squared will make one millimetre squared? So one millimeter squared is equal to one millimeter multiplied by one millimeter. And if we convert that into meters, 
well, one millimetre is one thousandth of a metre, multiplied by another millimetre, which is a one thousandth of a metre. So one millimetre squared is equal to one divided by a thousand squared of a metre squared. So to convert a millimetre squared into a metre squared, we'd have to divide by a thousand, because milli is a thousand, squared, because of the two dimensions. So to convert 1.5 millimetre squared into SI units of metre squared, we would divide by a thousand squared. So to convert centimetres cubed to metres cubed, we would divide by 100 cubed. So 100 because we're dealing with centimetres and cubed because we're looking at three dimensions. So to convert 2.5 centimetres cubed into SI units, that is metres cubed, we would have to divide by 100 cubed. And finally, to convert millimetres cubed to metres cubed, we will divide by a thousand cubed. So a thousand because we're dealing with milli and cubed because we're looking at three dimensions. So to convert 7.5 millimetres cubed into SI units, that is metres cubed, we would divide by a thousand cubed.